Galatians chapter 5, please. Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Last week I started about talking soul winning, and it's um, it's uh, it's um, connection to joy, soul winning and joy, soul winning and joy. Galatians chapter five. Now our our text scripture was out of uh, the Gospel of John chapter fifteen. Uh, verse so, uh, 7 through 11, Jesus said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. What's up? I got you. You're fine. Oh, that was a Justin Fields throw there. Actually, Justin Fields isn't too bad. It's his receiving core. That was more of a Mitch Trubisky throw. <laughs> I, I did. I was just referencing John. It's all, no, it's all good. It's all good. I said I, last week our text scripture was out of the Gospel of John. So I had you turn to Galatians because we're going to read at Galatians. But I went while I heard pages, the, the crew back there still flipping. Uh, Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. You have a concordance in the front of your Bible. There you go. Help them out. Galatians. It'll tell you the page number that that book is on. New New Testament. Yeah, <laughs> the new New Testament. Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22. Uh, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and uh, temperance against such. There is no law. There is no law against possessing the fruits of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, help us to grow in grace, uh, uh, to, to grow the fruit of the Spirit, uh, and to continue to grow it. Uh, Lord, sometimes uh, the, the tree needs pruning. The branches need pruning so we can grow. Uh, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd help us tonight, and we want to be... Uh, Oh, not just who we used to be, but maybe even better than what we used to be in um, several different departments. But Lord, I, I'd like to recapture a lot of what we've had. Uh, Lord, I'd ask that you'd use our church in a mighty way uh, once again. Do it again, Lord, uh, before you come back. Um, and it starts in our hearts. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we began to talk about uh, how America in particular... Uh, has tried to capture joy through entertainment, um, has had to, um, even if they couldn't capture joy, tried to fend off depression. We talk about the billion-dollar industries of, um, of pills and, uh, uh, and of drugs and of alcohols and of uh, uh, entertainment. And we know that according to Scripture and according to living, and some of us experience in these, uh, those, those um, uh, aforementioned things, that you can't attain joy through that. Uh, last week I gave you number one, you do not get joy because you get saved. You do not get joy because you get saved. Uh, and we began, we talked into that. Um, now you do get um, uh, access to joy. But that, was the number, that was point number two. Once saved, joy becomes available. Get that before. It's all right. Uh, uh, you say, and you may sit there and say, and I'm not here to argue about it tonight. Um, uh, I'm going to preach the sermon the way that it's written and, and, and the way that I uh, uh, believe uh, it needs to be expressed um, <clears throat> and, and, and portray it to you uh, as uh, the Bible explains it. Uh, but um, I don't, we're not taking time to argue tonight. You may say, well, I know some pretty happy atheists. 
I know some uh, uh, pretty um, uh, uh, happy um, Satanists, some pagans. I, th- I know some people who, who do not have God in their thoughts. I know folks who spend their Sundays on, on boats in the winter times, vacationing in, in their vacation home in the warmer uh, states. And I know people who live for themselves, so to speak, uh, and they seem to be pretty happy. Uh, yes, but that's all you see. You don't know what go- what's in their head and in their heart when they lay down at night. You have no idea what happens inside that home after the, the bonfire flames have went out and all the alcohol is, has been consumed and everybody goes their way and uh, the, the, uh, the, the fractured uh, home that uh, you leave behind. It's all smiles. It's all, it's all fun and games and poolside enjoyment until all the friends are gone and uh, the marriage that's on the rocks exposes itself but it's never exposed to you. Never judge. They say never judge a book by its cover. Anybody ever heard that? Never judge a book by its cover. And we are the book. We are the book. Uh, that's why I can't look at you and judge you by all that I see. And you can't look at me and judge me or by what you see. Um, as Pastor Jackson said this morning, we all know ourselves better than anybody else knows ourselves. Better than anyone else. But um, uh, so folks may have a... Um, um, a, an image of joy or an image of happiness that you would like to have. But the, the, the truth of the Bible is, now let God be true and every man a liar, uh, uh, you can't have real, sustainable joy if God is not in the mix, if God is not the main ingredient. Once you get saved, joy becomes available. And folks, I know all kinds of sad Christians I I have been a sad Christian. I know depressed Christians. I have I've been one. I I know all kinds of Christians who seem uh, uh, hopeless, and and they're sad and despondent. And uh, and I'm not here to to. um, I guess in my youth, in knowing the Bible and being on my mountaintop, sometimes I'd want to grab them and be like, "What's wrong with you? You're a Christian. You're saved. You're going to heaven." Put a smile on your face. Until I was one of them. Um, uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of folks, the misconception is, well, I got Jesus. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came. Ah, isn't life great? What a joy since Jesus came into. That's not true. It, now, it is if you'll meditate on I was a sinner going to hell and I'm not going to hell and I'm saved. And you can get happy about it. But that'll, it, it'll wear away. It'll wear, it'll wear away. Um, uh, and, and not saying you can't always be happy you're saved, but you're not always going to be like feeling like a, a million bucks about it. Uh, the fact is, is that, true, that joy is now available. False joy, facade joy, fake joy, um, uh, uh, empty joy, the world tries to give you. And and a lot of people work to attain it. God says, I give you joy. Jesus said, I give you joy, full joy. I want you to have joy. But here's the recipe, cause and effect for it. Once you get saved, joy, real joy, becomes available to us. Now, we just read out of Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Um, Now, uh, uh, joy, get this now. Joy is not a work. Get that. Joy is not a work. Joy is a fruit. Joy is a, it says it right here. Joy, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I want you to notice in Galatians chapter 5, that word spirit has a big S. It's a big S, not a little S. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. That, it's a, that spirit is a person, not a thing, a person. And that person is the Holy Spirit. And when we get saved, where does the Holy Spirit go? In us. The difference between uh, uh, saved and lost people is saved people have the Holy Spirit, lost people don't. Uh, That's just one distinction. The natural man perceiveth or understandeth not the things of God. That's why uh, when you were like, man, I was a lost person before and I tried to find my way through Scripture. It just kind of didn't make sense. And then you got saved. 
And you started going to a church where the light bulb came, well, the, the light bulb, so to speak, came on. And you started reading the Bible and hearing a man speak who explained the Bible, right? And you go, oh, that's what that means. Why well, do you think that happens? Because the, uh, it's in Galatians, or excuse me, the book of Romans, where it says that the Spirit of God communeth with, uh, it communes with us. It talks with us. Now, the joy, joy that, we, that the Spirit gives is a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, and, 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 along with many others. Now, joy is not a work, it's a fruit. Joy is not something we can um, uh, sprinkle. Joy is not something that we can conjure. Joy is not something that we can uh, uh, just kind of cook up in a lab or in the oven somewhere, and it's not something that the world can provide. Please understand that. I'm not telling you tonight, please get this, because I'm going to make a lot of statements that you go, but I know people that, whatever, the, the, what I'm trying to tell you is, is, is you, can, you can live in the world and you can be happy. You can live in the world and you can live it up and you can, as long, if you uh, uh, grieve the Holy Spirit to the extent that you uh, uh, put out the Holy Spirit, you ever have, a, I don't have, want to have you raise your hand, but Friend give you the silent treatment? You've given the friend the silent treatment? Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. And we can grieve him and grieve him and grieve him and grieve him and grieve him to where he's like, you know what, I'm not talking to you anymore. It didn't mean he left you, and it doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means that you're, you're, gonna live like, you're living like a fool. You're living like a fool, and the Holy Spirit's wasting his words on you. But um, uh, uh, the world, you can live and be happy. I told teenagers here, I said, listen, people are going to tell you, Christians are going to tell you, uh, especially if you grew up in a Christian home, the world is a deep, dark, and it is. But uh, um, uh, for just a normal person, it's not. It looks fun. Drinking beer on a Saturday night around a bonfire and having a good time and going to the game and hanging out with your friends and just kind of living life by how you feel and talking about uh, 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 the good old days and getting that tattoo that you like and, and changing this, your style and changing your look because, you know, that's just how you feel and how you want to, and going through life, living like, and, but uh, uh, folks in churches will tell you all the time that uh, the boogeyman's just around the corner and if you get out into the world, you're going to turn into a drug addict or you're going to end up in the gutter or you're going to, everybody paints a picture of a prodigal, but the fact of the matter is, is a prodigal is not just a prodigal because he ended up in a pig pen. The prodigal is a prodigal because he went away from principle. He went away from what was right. He went away from the straight and narrow. He went away from walking with the Lord and, and honoring his home and honoring his parents. He went away from what was right. A lot of prodigals are going to go to sleep in, in Cherry Hill tonight. A lot of prodigals are going go, uh, to go, uh, uh, go to sleep in their, um, their uh, high-rise apartment uh, 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 buildings in New York. And a lot of prodigals drive a... Uh, Half million dollar cars, a lot of prodigals have sold out on mom and dad and sold out on pastor and the youth pastor. A lot of prodigals have sold out for fame, for fame, for fortune, for, for whatever. They've sold out faith. The prodigal doesn't always end up in the pig pen, so to speak. Sometimes he ends up in Egypt, Egyptian cotton sheets and king size bed. But the fact of the matter is you've got one name. You've got one life to live, so to speak. And you say, sorry, Jesus, I sold you out for Egyptian cotton. Sorry, Jesus. Sorry, Sunday school teacher. Sorry, preacher. Sorry, mom and dad. Sorry, Lord Jesus, I sold you out for a $3 raise. Sorry, Lord Jesus, I, 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 I had a, a, a lavish lifestyle to live, so I sold you out. So the prodigal doesn't always end up in the pig pen. But I will tell you this, for the Christian prodigal, for the Christian prodigal who doesn't turn their life around and get right with God and start and, and get back in the fold, so to speak, and start serving the Lord again, he will stand before the Lord ashamed one day. He will stand before the Lord ashamed. Not everyone will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Not everyone will hear it. And the world is trying to through the, through the um, devices of Satan and the prince of the power of the air, the rule of darkness in high places, he deceives even Christians that joy is attained through the kind of car you drive and the clothes you wear and the address you live in. The devil's trying to tell you that joy comes through money. Joy comes through stuff. But the Bible says here it is a fruit. Amen. It's not something that you just get somewhere. 
It's something that you get one, it's very, very um, exclusive. And you get it, it becomes available at salvation, and it becomes, it becomes attainable through command, through obeying the commands of the Lord. Available at salvation, attainable through commands. Back there it says Bible, Baptist distinctives. Why were Baptists? Because the very first one says biblical authority. Biblical authority. For the person who wants sustainable joy, they have to accept. You, I, don't, I don't even want to have a conversation with somebody who calls themselves a Christian who does not say the Bible is their authority in all faith and practice. We're not even on the same level. Not even on the same level. I don't even want to hold a conversation with you if you don't live the best that you know how. You may be living in some ignorance until you come to the knowledge of truth on, on some matters. But if you're not trying to live by the book, then there's no sense in even, I mean, biblical authority on the things that I like and I don't like. Nope. It's biblical authority on all of it. On all of it. On all the pro- or issues of life. It's a fruit. It's a fruit. It's a fruit. Specifically... Get this, it says that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. It's listed as a second part. Second part, uh, or uh, um, excuse me, it is the second part listed for the fruit of the Spirit. Um, uh, uh, Joy, and I like having joy. I like having joy. You say, what's joy? I feel like joy is um, a spiritual emotion that rises above whatever the circumstances are. You kind of get, you understand, sometimes you see people and you're like, man, why? Why do they seem to have that about them? The Bible speaks about that, that you're able to give every man an answer that asks you the joy or the hope, the Bible says, that lieth in you. That every man comes to you and says, man, and not everybody will. Strangers on the street are going to come up and say, there's a glow about you. But it's a family member. It's a friend. It's a coworker. It's somebody saying, Man, we've, we've had enough conversations that I know things that are going, some things that are going on in your life, and you just seem to have a good spirit about it all. What is that? What, what is that? It's called joy. Some people say joy is Jesus, others, and yourself. I, okay. I like that. That's a good order. I'm not anti that, and I don't care who came up with it. It's, it's still true. Joy is Jesus, others, and yourself. Joy is a fruit. Say that back to me. Say joy is a fruit. All right, number two, I'm going to say it, and I want you to repeat it. Fruit must be grown. Fruit must be grown. Correct. Fruit must be grown. The joy of fruit, like all fruit, must be grown. It has to grow. If you have an apple orchard, ah, you've heard this, or you have um, an orange orchard, amen, uh, joy does not come from, um, um, or, or excuse me, God does not uh, come to the earth every couple of years or every year and just like drop apples like manna from heaven. He doesn't do that with oranges. He doesn't do that um, with grapes on the vine. He, do, he, he doesn't do that. What, what happens? Uh, uh, trees, apple trees, must grow. They must grow. Now, an apple tree has to become an apple tree. Right? That seed is planted, and then that, that begins to, to, to sprout roots downward, and then the, the vine, the, the main vine upward, a fruit tree, an apple tree must grow. It has to grow. And after several years, what does an apple tree produce? Apples. Of course it does. <clears throat> All fruit has to be grown the same way. So why would joy be any different? Joy, joy is the same. Joy doesn't just um, make an appearance. It's a fruit, and it has to be grown. It's a fruit, and it has to be grown. That's why I'm not uh, impatient with a bunch of folks who don't know how to say amen yet, who don't know how to um, uh, shout a while in church yet. There's, still, there's a bunch of baby trees. There's a bunch of uh, baby joy trees around here, and they're like, I don't, amen. You know, they, well, there's a little bit of joy. There's a little bit of joy. Now, fr- here, Francisco, that guy, he must be or upset with God, and there's no reason for them besides spiritual immaturity, or, or they've been led astray by false teaching. A lot of Christians <clears throat> and people, we want everything. We want everything now, without uh, without um, uh, without effort on our part. Uh, we want God to make everything all right. Uh, we want God to, to to lift all the burdens now. We want Him to take care of all the problems now. But it doesn't work that way. If you want joy, you're not going to get it overnight. If you want joy, you're not going to get it um, uh, uh, just by going to church on Sunday morning. It it doesn't just come right away. Now, since joy is a fruit, it does not grow by itself. Please understand this. Joy does not grow by itself. 
It takes ingredients. Uh, it has to be planted. It has to be nurtured. It has to be put in the right environment. It must be weeded. It must be watered. It must be taken care of. Joy is just like any other fruit. Joy is just like, just like any other fruit. It is grown over time, and it cannot be obtained all at one time. That's why I said just because you got saved did not make you a joyful person. Just because you got saved didn't make you joyful. Because if, if that were the case, then a bunch of people who are claiming to be saved are not saved. And then what about the people who are joyful some days and not joyful other days? Does that mean they're saved and lost? If we are basing our salvation off of the, uh, uh, the presence of joy, then, then the, the doctrine of salvation is wrong or we are wrong. We don't understand something correctly. So joy is available at salvation. Well, what do we do to get joy? I don't like being sad. I don't like being mad all the time. Now, sometimes I am. Where was I? We were, I was with Jamie. We went to the landing downtown. And we had some uh, Detroit-style pizza. It was real good. And uh, everything was calm, cool, collected, nice breezy night, so to speak. And everybody was walking their dogs and kids were playing and everybody. You could hear the chatter amongst the, the, the pedestrians there. And um, I told Jamie, I'm like, I kind of want something to pop off. <laughs> She's like, what? I was like, I want somebody to be stupid. She's like, why? I'm like, I feel like choking somebody. <laughs> Be like, I need to give somebody something, you know, uh, a tract, a gospel tract, amen. That's, that's what I needed to do. Um, but sometimes you're not in the best of moods, but I don't, I, I don't want to fight anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody, and I don't want to be hurt. Uh, we were playing basketball down a uh, uh, day or two ago, and there was this kid. He had a Red Ryder BB gun. And I said, why are you carrying that? Oh, it's because it's fun. I'm like, okay. I was like, you know what you ought to do? I was like, you ever got, if somebody tried to mess with us, did you just take like John Wayne, take the butt of that gun and hit him in the bridge of their nose? He yeah, said, you know what you call that? He said, what? I said, you call it an equalizer. So if there's a guy bigger than you or stronger than you or there's two of them, just have an equalizer. I said, why bloody your knuckles if you can just hit somebody in the nose with the butt of a gun? <laughs> I said, well, I, we were talking about personal protection. Um, uh, but yeah, I told yeah. Don't, don't assault anybody. Um, but um, I don't want to I don't want to fight anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to be depressed. I want to be joyful. I like being joyful. I like laughing. I like making people laugh. I like having a good attitude. I like it, it makes my heart merry. I like being joyful. So how do I get this joy? What do I what do I do to get this joy? Um, well, first you got to understand what joy is. Joy is not just some feeling that comes and goes. John 15, 11 says Jesus, uh, Jesus said that it is possible to have full joy, full joy. Hey, come to the gas station. I'm going to put some fuel in your tank. Okay, but only put a quarter. Uh, only put a half. I had uh, somebody call me some time ago, and they said, uh, hey, brother, the Lord, uh, I feel like the Lord told me he wanted me to, to fill your gas tank up. I said, great. He said, uh, meet me down at this gas station down here. I said, cool, no problem. So I hopped in the Escalade. <laughs> I went down there, and he was like, where's your car? I said, brother, it's been, in, it's been in the shop waiting on body parts for like two months. I was like, if you came to church more often, you'd know that. Uh, so fill her up, brother. <laughs> Guess what he did? He filled it up. He filled it up. I, hey, no, you're not going to sit here and tell me you're going to do something and then back out on it, especially after the Lord told you to do it. Uh, yeah, if the Lord can't get your tithe, he'll get you another way um, through a sly pastor, amen. Um, uh, uh, I don't want a quarter of a tank. I want it full. I don't want quarter joy. I don't want half joy. I want full joy. I want full joy. Now, some folks' joy may be more than others. Younger Christians, baby Christians, they don't have the capacity for lots of joy. It's more like a, um, a, a nitrous spurt in their car. You know, they hit it, yeah, this is great, and then kind of fizzles out, and then it needs to be filled up again. The older you are, the, and I don't mean age-wise, but the older Christian you are, the more veteran and experienced Christian you are, the capacity for, for, for joy ought to, ought, to, ought to grow. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you, that your joy, or excuse me, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. 
Now, it's possible to have full fruit of joy. The full fruit of joy. If you have the full fruit, then you have had, then you have must first had little fruit. Uh, folks, do you understand? Fruit goes through a process. It goes from nothing to something to its full growth. We went out to a pumpkin, the pumpkin patch, a pumpkin patch. And um, I hate going to that stuff, but I went. Uh, the pumpkin patch. It's like, well, pumpkins. Anyway, uh, uh, but pumpkins, it's just big, giant, ugly gourds, squash, whatever, you know. Uh, but, man, they had some pumpkins out there that were massive, huge, put in the bed of a truck, huge. That, not everybody has that. There were some pumpkins that were little, oh, isn't that cute? I'm like, no, it's not cute. You know what's cute? A 16-ounce steak and steak fries, loaded steak fries. Oh my, okay, uh, that, that's cute. Um, uh, 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 but, oh, oh, look at these little pumpkins, and look at these massive pumpkins. What happened is some of those things, man, they, 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 uh, they, they, got more, they got more than enough, amen. They got what they needed to grow, and some of them grew and grew and grew and grew, and some of them, they, they didn't grow at all. And they didn't, grow, they didn't grow at all. But joy must grow and grow and grow and grow, just like any other fruit. It, it has to start off little. It has to start off as something, and then it grows. So if you have little joy, if you have no joy tonight, you can start a process to have a little bit of joy. And if you have a little bit of joy tonight, you can start the process, the cause and effect process of having much joy. The Bible, Jesus said much fruit and full joy. Full joy. Now, you see this watch? Jamie bought this watch for me uh, for Father's Day. Oh, what, three, four years ago? Yes, three, four years ago, something like that. Uh, uh, I have this watch, and um, this watch uh, it, this watch isn't going to grow. It's not, if I put this on Lucas's wrist or Houston's wrist, uh, it would be big on them. But guess, guess what grows? Do they grow or does the watch shrink? They grow. They grow. Uh, the watch isn't going to grow. It's, it, it is what it is. It's man-made. It, it can't grow. However, fruit can grow, and it will grow if it's put in the right environment and the right steps are taken. So everyone who has full, uh, a full-grown uh, 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 an orange once had an orange that was not completely fully grown. You ever buy bananas that are, like, green? Well, what do you do? You don't eat them right away. You wait for them to ripen and turn yellow. Now, I know some people, well, I like the green tint on it. I'm just saying, you don't just pull it and start eating it. You have to wait for it to grow. That banana starts small, and then it grows to its full size. So once you get saved, you don't immediately get full joy. You get a little bit of joy. Then the things uh, uh, come along in life that try to choke out your joy. But this little bit of joy... It, if you nurture that joy and you care for that joy and, you, and then you weed out the things that will choke out that joy and you stay away from the things that choke out that joy that you now possess, you can have full joy. Then the joy begins to grow. Then you can be happy about going to church more often. Then you can really understand praise and worship when we open up our songbooks and we, and we, and we uh, uh, sing the songs about God's saving grace. Something stirs inside of you. Uh, of course, this is providing the availability of more joy. And I like joy. How many of y'all like being happy? Anybody like being happy? Things that uh, produce happiness in me. You know if the Bears won this afternoon? Great. Francisco, I watched the game. I'm aware. You know what, you know what produces anger? People that talk out in church. Um, uh, you're going to be lost if you don't stop talking. Uh, but uh, uh, we're going to excommunicate. Well, you know what? We have a dungeon somewhere in the basement. <laughs> I think we could cast him into outer darkness. Uh, uh, but you know what? I don't. Okay, great. Great. They won. But in my, in, in my they're not, number one, they're, they're, not, they're not winning the Super Bowl. They're not going to the playoffs. They're not. Well, you don't know what could happen. Yes, I do. I've been a Bears fan my whole life. I'm telling you what's going to happen. But you know what? If they won, all right, great. You know what would give me temporary joy and happiness? That if I drive throughout the interstates this week and I don't get in any traffic jams. I like cruising. Put me at 70, 72, 73, 83. But, but put me at a good speed. No, I'm not kidding. I don't speed. Uh, uh, put me at 70, 72, depending on the interstates, 65, 68, anywhere in there. And put me in there and just kind of let me find my, my spot in traffic. 
and just let me cruise along. That helps me listen to Brother Hiles, and it helps me listen to singing, and it helps me listen to uh, sports radio, and it helps me think. If I don't have to stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, people cutting in front of me and all this, I, I like smooth, that'd make me a little bit, that'd make me a little joyful. You know what makes me a little bit joyful? Good food. You know what makes me a little bit joyful? Oh, lots of people coming to church. Hey, that was great. But you know what happens? Monday is just a couple hours away. So what is this joy? I'm not talking about these things that make me happy because the word happy comes from happenings. The happenings that make me happy. Okay, those come and go. Those come and go, the ebb and flow. But joy, joy that if the bears lost, I was stuck in a traffic jam, I had garbage food, and hardly anybody came to church that Sunday. Jackson, can you still be joyful? Can you still be joyful? Is this joy, 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 joy down in your heart? Yes, and if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a bomb because there's a joy in Jake Jackson. There's a joy in this old boy. There's a joy in this Christian, and, you, and I'm speaking for you, a joy in these Christians that say, yes, come no, no matter what comes, I've got joy. I have joy because when I die, I'm going to heaven. I have joy because my sins are forgiven. I have joy that... God bless Kirsten that if I ended up in a wheelchair, I could still smile and still have joy and still have peace and still sing for Jesus. And I pray one day that she can, amen. And if I got cancer, that I could still have joy. That if I lost a near and dear loved one, that I could still have joy. Not that I wouldn't sorrow. Not that I wouldn't have a time, a, a, a season of, 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 of worry or a season of, of, of sadness, but that I could come out of it. That's what I said about valleys a couple Sundays ago. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Some Christians look at the valley and they say, oh no, they put their whole life on pause and they say, I don't want to go through that valley. And some people, they get in the valley and they build a house there and they stay there. No, get out of the valley. It's not about avoiding valleys. It's not about not going through valleys. And it's not about not being sad or being depressed or being despondent. It's about saying, no, we are perplexed but not in despair, amen, in the book of Corinthians. Say, I may be sad, but I know there's sunshine here. I, I may be down, but I know that on the other side of this, give me a day or two. I've said that to family members. They're like, you know, my dad or my, or my wife or my mom, uh, they try to, I may be down about something or discouraged about something, and they try to lift me up. And I'll, I, and I'll tell them sometimes, just give me a couple days, I'll get through it. Give me a couple days, I'll get through it. Why? Because I know myself, so I can encourage myself, so I can heal myself, so I can love myself, so I can take care of myself. Why? Because the world needs joyous Christians. I, I mean, I got no business living in this world uh, 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 if I'm just going to be a sad, depressed, walking on my bottom lip, bottom lip Christian. And the devil's going to do anything and everything he can to, be a, uh, 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 to disable you to walk around on your bottom lip. And I'm listen. Everybody's got different paths, and everybody's got these burdens that they just can't bear, and, they, and everybody has these hard, hardships in your life. I don't know all your life, and you don't know all of mine, but bless God, there's one common denominator for the Christian. There's one unifying factor, and that's Jesus, because he heals all wounds. He helps bear all burdens. burdens. He helps carry all weights. He helps heal all all wounds he helps he does he heals he goes he says anything and everything for everybody why because he is all encompassing because he is all loving because he is all knowing because he is all caring because he is all powerful and he knows you better than anybody else around you knows you and if I can come to Christ then you can come to Christ. And God says the same joy that I have available for, for uh, Doug Jackson is available for Jake Jackson, is available for Jim, is available for Pip, is available for Lucas, is available for Alex. It's available for any of them and all of them. Now joy isn't something we just try to buy. We try to buy it up. A bunch of us are going to waste money and waste time and, and sin this Christmas. Now I like Christmas time. And Jesus wasn't born in December, by the way. And I'm not hopping on that train. I'm not, I'm not dying on that hill. But a bunch of Christians are going to go into debt this Christmas and spend money on credit cards to buy a bunch of stinking China-made garbage to give to their kids for three minutes of joy. And it's going to end up, and I, am, I, I, I can testify truth, I have seen and do testify, that toys end up in the bottom of a stinking barrel and they end up broken. And now I got, I got five boys. Five of them. Four of them actively doing something. But Lucas, he's growing up out of toys. 
I've got three boys. Deacon's too young and Lucas is too cool. Three boys to, that, that play with toys, and they play with them. But there's a whole bunch of them that don't get played with. And I'm talking like pick them up with shovels. And, and, and it's not often, I mean, it's years and years and years worth of birthdays and Christmases and just because we love you gifts. But what does grandma do? What does dad do? What does mom do? What do, what do, what do aunts and uncles do? They buy these gifts, and everybody takes these little pictures for the kid to go, this is from Aunt Susie. And they open it up and go, wow, look, it's a Nerf gun with 3,500 Nerf bullets that are going to end up in every nook and cranny in the house. And they smile and go, wow, it's my favorite action figure. It's my favorite whatever. And then they move on to the next gift. Now you say, Brother Jake, it's just money, and I'll spend that money for that three minutes of joy. Cool, then good. If, if, if that was worth it to you, I'm not here to judge it. But I am judging the whole situation, saying we repeat the matter over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and we never give money to missions, and we never give, um, uh, 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 am I my brother's keeper? We're hats and gloves and scarves and food and whatnot to the homeless and to women's shelters and to orphanages and, and children and widows and children in need. Really doing damage against Satan. Joy just doesn't come from the cheap Christmas we buy. But it comes from uh, uh, why we bought it and who we bought it for. What it was all about. I like giving good gifts. Anybody go out of their way, you try, and you don't have to raise your hand, but you can think, I want you to think inside and answer yourself. You go, and maybe, and maybe you're a cheapskate, and I don't mean that as a diss, but you're just kind of like, eh, whatever, you know. Uh, I like trying to give good gifts. I like thinking, and I don't mean like the dollar amount, but I mean like putting thought into it and saying, what did that person need? All year long, what was that thing they looked at the most? What was the thing they tagged on Pinterest? What was the thing they said they wanted the most? And then you try to do that. You try to provide that. You try to give that. And, I, 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 and it's a good thing I'm not a millionaire uh, because I'd be, hey, you need a car. Let's get your car. Oh, you need this. I don't know. Not that I'm some philanthropist, but I like doing stuff like that. I like helping people. And I like, and I, and I like being helped. Uh, uh, but everyone, everyone has uh, uh, the ability to produce real joy, sustainable joy, not once a time at Christmas. And I love Christmas. I, Christmas is my favorite holiday. Christmas and Thanksgiving, mainly because it's, I mean, the whole family comes together. That's the reason why I like it. The whole family comes together, and uh, I like hanging out with my people. Uh, but um, you get a little bit of joy when you nurture it and, and care for it and, and, and take care of it. Um, uh, and, I, and I like these things. So don't be faked out by the world's joy um, uh, by telling you you have to buy a bunch of things. So uh, uh, thus far we've determined that uh, we can have um, more than just joy. More than just joy. The Bible says the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is all these different things. And you can have more than just joy. You can have full joy. Full joy. Uh, now that's the effect I want. That's called, called the effect. The effect that I desire, that I want. So what is the Bible prescription for joy? What do I have to do for joy? In John 15, the Bible, Jesus is referring to things he's already said. Get the word. Now, wording is so important. The Bible is so important on its words. Each and every single word is of vital importance. Um, uh, that's why the scripture says every word of God is pure. So Jesus said... Things that he already said. He said, he did not say, these things I'm about to speak. These things I'm about to say unto you. He said, these things have I spoken. He's saying, I've already said these things. He's referring to what he said in the first ten verses. He tells us that what he has spoken, what he has already said, is the prescription for joy. So a lot of people are going, okay, what's the prescription for joy? He already said it. He said it in the first 10 verses. He gives us uh, two results that come from, uh, um, uh, John does, two results from doing what Jesus has already mentioned. They are uh, uh, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Now think about that. We skip over that. That my joy might remain in you. What does that mean? That Jesus' joy is transferred to me? Or does it mean that Jesus is joyous over me? He's joyous about me. Jesus rejoices about me how cool is that 
that Jesus rejoices over me, about my deeds, about my obedience, about me being saved, amen. Jesus died for me. So I get saved, and he says that my joy might remain in you. So does that, so what does that mean? Does that mean that I get Jesus' joy? If that's the case, that's pretty cool. The joy that Jesus has, which is almost unimaginable, I can have some of that. And then he says that your joy might be full. The joy I have is in you, and it can be full. It can be full. Now, Jesus gives us the recipe, and I need to button this down. He gives us the recipe so that our joy may remain and that it may be full. Um, uh, There's nothing in the first ten verses about football games, baseball games, cookouts, family reunions, um, uh, uh, church potlucks. Uh, there's nothing in there about um, a, a recreation and amusement parks. There's, no, there's nothing in those first 10 verses about that. Baseball does not bring you joy. World Series is happening right now. Uh, thousands of people are packing those places out, even the players. Even the players. One team is going to win. They're going to win. And they're going to be happy, and they're going to charge the mound and throw their hats and their gloves in the air and jump around and spray champagne. Hey, man, quit messing around. Put that down. And, and man, they're going to be joyous. And you know what's going to happen? That's going to last until about the beginning of next season when they're grinding away trying to reach the goal that they just attained. And I don't know. I've never won a World Series. They say, man, you go down as a as a... You know, you go down in the annals of history as a, an icon in the sports world. Yeah, along with the other thousands and thousands of people that have already won the World Series. Everybody fights and sacrifices and works so hard to attain the same prize that somebody else won last year. That's not real joy. The Bible says the, the real joy is peace that passes all understanding. So when you lose the World Series, you still have joy. When your team loses, you still have joy. If you're like Kirsten and you can never run the bases again, you still have joy. You still have joy. That a miscarriage doesn't cause you from finding joy of working in the nursery with babies. That um, uh, you used to be super athletic and super hardworking and super Uh, he-man. Brother Bill Boyd who was dumped upside down on, on a job site and fell 30 feet onto his head. But I guarantee you, he didn't have more joy with a full, able body. And I know, I, I've heard that he was on fire for God during that time, too. Then he, then the, the joy that he found, real quality joy, then he found in that wheelchair. And he came and preached for us many times. Real joy. Real joy. Joy is not found in trips to Hawaii, picnics, vacations. I have found many times that I have come back from a vacation and needed time to recover from my vacation. I have found that I've traveled uh, several hours to sporting events and spent money only to yell at the referees and to be disappointed at the end of that. That's not joy. Hey, man, I got tickets to the game. Yeah, this is great. Blow out. (laughs) That doesn't bring joy. It doesn't bring joy. You know what doesn't bring joy? Doing 140 miles an hour to be pulled over and given a big ticket or maybe lose your license. That doesn't bring, no, 140 miles an hour brings joy. But only for a couple seconds. (laughs) Jesus brings sustaining joy. Real joy. Jesus said, uh, uh, the parable of the vine, he said, um, uh, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. My father is the husbandman. Every branch... That uh, in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. What is the fruit that Jesus mentioned? That is found in Proverbs. And I'll give it to you next week. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Real fruit. What is fruit? Fruit, Jesus gave it. He said, uh, 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 what is the fruit? What's this fruit Jesus is talking about? Here, I'll give it to you as a cliffhanger. Proverbs eleven thirty 30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. 
The fruit of a Christian. What is the fruit of you? What is, what is your fruit? The Holy Spirit gives us love and joy and peace and long-suffering. The fruit of a Christian is another fruit-bearing Christian. We should all be looking to produce fruit in our life. If the Holy Spirit has fruit and he lives within me, then I should have fruit. I, there should be something I'm producing in my life. Now, don't get impatient with yourself. You may be a young Christian. Don't get impatient with yourself. Maybe you may be an old Christian because you're a human and maybe it's been a while since you've pruned the branches. Maybe it's been a while since you've done some, some weeding and gardening in your spiritual garden. My prayer for you and for me, for our church, is that we begin again with others to bear, Jesus said, much fruit. Much fruit. To see souls saved who go and win other souls. What I want to do is, is I want to ask you to stay seated. And uh, I want you to go with me just for a moment uh, to uh, the throne of God's grace in prayer. And ask the Lord for his patience. Thank him for his goodness. And ask him to bless our church. Heavenly Father, um, you have been oh, for the last 28 years and 28 and a half years been very gracious uh, and you have done many many miracles at three rivers baptist church lord thousands and thousands of people saved tens of thousands no exaggeration and lord we're just a, we're just a less than a dozen baptisms away from five thousand baptisms uh, lord um it's exciting I know I didn't finish my message tonight, but it's exciting for individuals and for church congregations to experience and host weekly lost people who get saved and then those new born-again Christians who join the church and get baptized and start getting involved. And it, it makes the, uh, Lord, excuse me for lack of a better term, the old heads feel excited and, and all the knowledge and wisdom that they've had over the years they begin to share that with new Christians and uh, Lord it's it's an exciting time uh, to to see people saved but Lord it, an apple doesn't just produce another apple it produces an apple tree and and and, and so on and so forth and Lord I don't want to just produce another saved person I want a, a fruit bearing Christian but I don't want to be a fruit-bearing Christian. Because I know everybody in this room, they'd say, I, want to, I, I wish that everybody that I got saved would turn into fruit-bearing Christians. And there are some people who say, I just want to see people saved. I'm in a bit of a dry spell. I haven't had anybody saved in a while. I haven't, I haven't given witness in a long time, and, and I'd like to do that again. Well, then, Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us. Give us the, the perfect situation. Let our path Cross the path of somebody who wants to be saved. And then let us be ready. Some folks will get scared, Lord. They're like, I don't know how to do it. Lord, give them the, 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 the boldness. Uh, carry gospel tracts. Just share the salvation story with somebody. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd bless our church uh, in ways that we haven't seen in a while. Now, Lord, you have. You've done, this is a miracle church. Uh, long story short, Lord, you know it. Uh, the way that you sustained us and helped us and, 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 and held us up through many difficult days. Oh, God, you're a very real God. Help us, to, help us to realize that and then serve you as such and come boldly to the throne of grace and have a real relationship with you and not just religion, not just tradition, but a walk and a talk with Almighty God who knows and cares for us, and he cares about Three Rivers Baptist Church. You care. We know you care. Lord, I'd ask that you'd give us safety as we go out this week into this mad, mad world. Help us to be that light that shines in darkness. Be with us now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Amen.